Infections are a major cause of mortality and morbidity in babies around the world. All newborn babies are susceptible to infection, from term babies born of normal mothers to premature babies born of high-risk pregnancies. There are many reasons for this, including immature immune systems, immature skin and mucosal barriers, and immunologic inexperience with bacteria and viruses. Babies normally begin to colonize with bacteria around the time of birth. Data is rapidly accumulating, which establishes the importance of the microbiome in affecting immediate and later health. At the same time, newborns may be exposed to potential pathogens during the birth process or in their environment immediately after birth. In combination, high susceptibility plus exposure to new potential pathogens puts all babies at risk in the neonatal period. Clinically, symptoms of sepsis are often difficult to distinguish from other neonatal illnesses, and sick newborns are regularly evaluated for possible sepsis upon admission to the NICU. For all of these reasons, infection control plays a major role in all NICUs. Controls must be put in place to identify and treat possible infections at birth and to minimize the possibility of subsequent infections in babies with an extended stay in the NICU. Several factors must be considered in the control of infections. These include nursery design, equipment design and usage, NICU policies and procedures, and systems for continuous oversight and quality improvement. Infection control begins with modern approaches to the design of nurseries and NICUs. Function follows form, and modern architecture incorporates NICU design that minimizes the spread of infection, including attention to space, room ventilation, and placement of sinks and hand sanitizers, among other factors. NICU designs should be evaluated for ease of cleaning and include services that minimize the possibility of bacterial spread. Infection control should be considered in selecting equipment to be used in the neonatal ICU. High quality equipment meeting modern design standards should accomplish their functions while minimizing nosocomial infection. Equipment should use high quality materials that withstand disinfection and equipment design should allow easy access for cleaning and disinfection. Equipment should use durable materials which tolerate the strong chemicals and physical abrasion associated with cleaning. The combination of good NICU design with high quality NICU equipment should create a safe environment for babies, promoting good care and preventing spread of infection. Nurseries should also establish policies and procedures to minimize the likelihood of infection. Policies for caregivers should address issues of hand washing, gloving, and nail care. Patient care policies should address catheter care as well as patient skin and oral care. Policies should also address appropriate patient isolation, visitation of families, and screening of visitors. Equipment policies include proper disinfection, storage, and handling of equipment. Equipment policies should also address frequency of ventilator circuit changes and humidification. Finally, it is important that NICUs develop hospital policies for control and surveillance of poss possible hospital-based infections. Surveillance should include monitoring of infection rates in the NICU, hospital-wide infection patterns and sensitivities, and prevalence of infections in the community. Newly born babies are susceptible both to nosocomial infections and community-acquired infections such as RSV, and care needs to be taken that babies are not put at risk for nosocomial and community infections. Surveillance results should be regularly reported to senior management, for example in scorecards or dashboards, as part of a hospital-wide commitment to reduce infection. In summary, infection control plays an important role in the NICU and infection management should be a routine part of care in every NICU.